Are you looking for a way to make some standoffs for when you have a larger diameter tube in the front and the rear in the back and you need to run a launch rail along the top? That's what I'm going to show you in this video. Hi, I'm Tim Van Milligan from Apogee Components. Today I'm going to show you how to make your own launch rail standoff. Um, and this is for the situation where you have a big tube in the front and a small tube in the back. Um, this year, in 2016 and 2017, the TARC competition requires you to build a rocket with two different diameters. And so if you're going to use a launch rail to guide your rocket, you're going to need to make a standoff. Because otherwise, the rail, which runs along the tube, is going to slam into the side of the transition. The purpose of using a launch rail is because you want something that's very stiff and very long to launch your rocket from. Uh, that makes your rocket fly straighter. Um, it's better than a launch rod. Almost all high power rockets are now flown on launch rails instead of launch rods. Um, typically we use a rail button kind of like this. Um, and the way it's used, it's, um, it's a three part. Uh, system, you have a weld nut, which is this piece right here. Then you have the button itself, and one end has um, it's chamfered for the screw. Um, that's so where you have a countersunk screw that goes into it, and then the screw comes out, and that goes into the weld nut like that. And then when you use it on your rocket, um, you drill a hole in the side of the tube. Take this one apart so you can see it. Um, so you have the weld nut and then there's a hole in the tube and you just pass the weld nut through. You put the button on and then you just screw it down and glue it into place. And you put a little bit of um, a glue on the threads to lock them in place and also put a little bit of glue over the weld nut so that it can't come out. And that's pretty secure for the top one, and that's probably what you're going to want to do. But now for the bottom one, you just can't mount it on the tube like this because it's at a different elevation than the one here. So we need a standoff, something to mount the button on so that it's at the same level as this. And so if you take a ruler, and if you just look at the edge right here, this edge right here, I want my standoff to be that thickness so we can mount the uh, rail button on top of that. And to do make that rail button, I'm going to use what um, we have called Fix-It Epoxy Clay. Um, and this is what it looks like. It's a two-part system. Um, it's a clay, but it's got epoxy impregnated into it. And when you mix it together, it starts a chemical reaction and then 24 hours later it's hard as a rock. Um, now you can use this, or you can use a pre-made standoff. Um, we have these here at Apogee um, in several sizes um, for different diameter tubes to different, um, you know, from one elevation to the next. For all the common sizes that we think they're going to be for the TARC competition this year. But if you're using tubes of different diameters um, and you're in a pinch, this is probably the way to go. Um, and so what I want to end up is, with is something that looks like this. Um, so we have the rail button and the, and the screw on top and a pedestal with the, uh, made out of the epoxy clay. And so when we look at it, the, so I'm looking at the bottom of the rail button and I want that bottom to be equal to the um, edge of the ruler right here. Hopefully that you can see that on this video. Um, so that's, that's the height that you want to get. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and start mixing this up. And I'm going to use some gloves because I don't want to, it is epoxy, so you don't want to, you want to keep it off of your skin as much as possible. Um, and getting it under your fingernails is a little hard to get out too. So I'm going to take a little blob of it. 
I'm going to take a little ball of equal, equal size of part A and part B. Something like that. And then just knead them together. And you're going to want to do this for about five minutes. Um, I'm still mixing a little bit. Um, ideally, you want to wait probably um, about 30 minutes to 45 minutes where it starts getting a little bit stiffer. Um, that's going to make it a little bit easier to work with. Right now, it's, it's really soft and pliable. Um, and you can kind of feel it because it deforms really easily. And if I, you know, did it into a long snake, you can see it droops. Once it starts stiffening up, um, then it's a little bit easier to work with, and I would recommend that um, if you have the time. So what I'm going to do to start this, uh, I'm not going to use the weld nut um, because the weld nut is not going to um, fit inside of my uh, epoxy clay here. Um, I want to make this kind of streamlined, kind of to lower the drag as much as possible. This one I did before, and it I only worked on it for about three minutes, so it doesn't. It looks pretty crude, but you can uh, really airfoil this to make it really aerodynamic to, to lower the drag on the rocket. So I want to start by taking a little bit of the epoxy clay, and I want to mash it into the threads of the screw like that and then just start working it into a long snake like that it's a little long right now and I want to I want to feed that through the hole it's still a little long okay can you see that Okay, I'm going to push that into the rail button and then just smoosh it in. And you can see a lot of the epoxy clay is going to come out the top, so you just wipe that off. And I got a little button coming out the bottom end. And then I'm going to extend that. And then, so that's going to be, you know, you can, I want my pedestal to be a little bit thicker. Kind of roll it into a little a little column like that and this is going to be my bottom that's going to be stuck to the tube so here I've got a tube and I'm just going to press it down onto the tube like that so right now it's it's too high so if I put my tube on it like that and I can see how high it is so to get it to the right height I just kind of push down and then just double check it, and it's still a little high. And keep double checking it. Um, and then at, once you get it to the height you want, then you just start shaping it into an aerodynamic shape, uh, which is more long and skinny, kind of like a teardrop shape. So at the front would be more rounded, and then at the back, it kind of comes to a point. And you can make this any shape you want. It's your rocket. But you can work at it, just kind of work around the edges. And this will be much easier to do once it starts stiffening up. Mine is still kind of soft. Um, because if you, if you let it go to the side, it might start drooping like that. And we don't want that. You always got to make sure to look down the, the, uh, the tube, make sure it's still perpendicular. Um, the location on the tube doesn't really matter because we can rotate the tube around like that. Uh, what's most important is that it's it's straight along the tube so you don't get a lot of extra drag and that it's at the right height and at the right position along your tube. Now I like to put one rail button towards the back of the rocket near the fins, probably almost at the very bottom, and then one ro uh, another rail button just a little bit ahead of the center of gravity. That's my own choice. Some people like to uh, shorten them up, some people like to make them longer apart. So. Um, another little trick you can do is take a little bit of water, dip your finger in the water, and that will help you smooth out all the little imperfections in the 
um, epoxy clay and you can get a nice smooth surface and you can feather out those edges uh, make it really good um, and then when you're done it's going to be hard as a rock kind of like this one right here I'll just take this off yeah, something's always falling off the table so like this one here um, it is it is epoxy clay and it is conformal like our other rail button or rail guides um, and it's strong and you can see I'm wiggling the tube and it's not coming off. Um, so that's how you make some standoffs and you can make them different shapes like that. <laughs> uh, go a little crazy, have a little fun. That's what rocketry is all about. Um, over here to the side, uh, we have some other videos that you might be interested in. Um, and then down here uh, on YouTube, there's a subscribe button. Um, and there's also a like button and we'd really appreciate it if you could like this video for us and, and then go ahead and submit a comment. We love reading your comments too. My name again is Tim Van Milligan. This is the Apogee Rocketry Workshop. May the winds be light, may the skies be blue, and may all your rockets fly straight and true.